Hi everyone, I'm Katie Scheuer and I started Project Spatial to make sure that you can increase your spatial impact within your organization. Every week I post new videos on GIS and GIS strategy and creating your spatial impact. So if you would like to be notified, make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss a single video. Now, I have made a lot of mistakes in my career um, doing GIS, and a lot of times I have walked in and there's been nothing created for me, so I have had to create a bunch of geo databases and throughout upgrades and changes in some procedures and stuff like that, sometimes I end up recreating those geo databases that I originally created um, just because I'm trying to make them the best and most efficient that they can be. So throughout all of that time, I have discovered some key things that I have screwed up throughout the years. And I wanna share those mistakes with you today so you don't end up making the same ones that I did and you can learn from my mistakes. So mistake number one is making sure you have a schema put together. You want to have a actual schema of what your geo database is going to look at like before you start creating that geo database so the way i typically do this because i work in utilities and i've worked in government there are already schemas out there created for you so look at your peers or look at standardized schemas that are out there and see how you can use those to your advantage um, if you are an Esri customer, they have a bunch of resources on this. So make sure that no matter what industry you're looking at, try to find your standard schema, and that will put you on the right track to making sure that you don't have any problems going forward with making sure you have your data in the right spot. <laughs> Mistake number two is not using domains. So domains allow you to create a pick list that you can use within your field. So that way you are doing quality control of your data right up front. Domains also allow you to check existing data and making sure that you have all of your categories in there um, for your existing data and for your existing fields. So if you get some kind of not so great data or if you're not sure your data quality, create a domain and that way you'll make sure that you have everything lined up perfectly. Mistake number three that I have made many times um, is mixing my quantitative data and my qualitative data. Now, you wanna make sure that you're using the right field types for these different types of data. You don't want to be using a currency field and then calling it a string field because you're not going to be able to use that in the calculations that you want to use because the computer is going to think it's all text numbers and not actual value numbers. So make sure that you are paying attention to your different types of your field types when you're setting up what you're going to store as quantitative and what you're going to store as qualitative information. Also, I have seen people make the mistake of putting temporal data, so dates and timestamps, in string fields. And this, while it works, doesn't work very well when you want to start using that temporal data as dates and times. Make sure you start off on the right foot and use the right data type for your information. Mistake number four is not tracking your creation and editing time and users. When you start tracking this information, you now have an outlook of when was this last edited? Did you get this piece of information updated in the last year? Did you get that inspection done on these pieces? Now, the thing that I will caution about that use is that you want to make sure that you are not relying on editing update dates for like strategic information. Because if I go in and change a typo, that's going to give me a new edit log and that could erase your dates that you were trying to figure out. 
So be cautious on it, but make sure that you're tracking it because it is great information to have if you got something wrong or in the wrong spot and you can trace back and see who did it and when they did it and be able to make that correction. Mistake number five that I have done myself and I'm still working on this one is metadata. Now you need to make sure that you are using your metadata and I am saying this to myself as much as I am saying it to you. Um, I have relied on other people's information and if there isn't metadata go along with it, there isn't a lot of value to that information because I don't know when it was created, how it was created, how it was maintained or anything like that. So if you want others to be able to use your information or if you are going to be moving to a different department or you're going to be moving on to a new company, you wanna make sure that all of your data is cataloged and recorded about when was that created, how was it created, and how was it maintained at the minimum. You wanna have that information in there because the next person that comes along needs all of that metadata to be able to make use. Otherwise, they might just be throwing away years of your work because you didn't write it down and say, this is how I did it. So make sure you're tracking your metadata. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you don't make any of these five mistakes again. If you have in the past, um, please share any mistakes that you have made in the comments below, and make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And also, check out in the links below, I have a newsletter for you guys if you want to be able to show up in the email. Um, I would love to have you guys sign up for my newsletter. I promise I don't spam you. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching. Bye.